Hey there, thank you for taking this course. As always, feel free to comment on anything, ask a question, drop me an email. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. No questions will be left unanswered. Also, you may use the questions area to discuss the lectures posed to each other and so on. Well, that being said, let's get started. I probably shouldn't blabber all that much why you should implement in-app purchases into your app because you probably know that how important in-app purchases are for your app monetization. That's why you have come here to learn how to do that. But maybe you just stumbled upon this course and said to yourself, hmm, in-app purchases, I have heard of that, let's see how it works and how it may benefit my business. So for those of you who aren't that much religious about in-app purchases, here's what I think about the whole deal. As I mentioned earlier, in-app purchases are the holy grail of app monetization. But it's a little more complicated than throwing an unlock full game or remove ads in a purchase to your game. In the lectures below, I will teach you the ins and outs of how to do it the right way. But first, why in-app purchases? And why aren't you selling your $0.99 game at all? Should you make it free? But what about the money then? To get on the right track, we need to recap a little history of app monetization. Let's start by understanding the 99 cents monetization system. It was 2010 and the Angry Birds were smashing the App Store for 99 cents. It's a well-known commercial fact. The cheaper you go, the more you sell. And with costs of making an app for the App Store being so, so low, nearly everyone could go this low to sell their apps. And it worked. The cheapest was the king. Your game still had to be great though, I'm not going into that here, explaining only the monetization part. So, all the 9.99s, the 5.99s, the 2.99s and even the 1.99s were simply not as profitable as the worshipped 0.99 cents system. And it worked for a while, till the market oversaturated and the 99 cents apps weren't a sensation anymore. They were all over the place, so nobody cared if you released uh, only for 99 cents less than a cup of Starbucks coffee app. They didn't care. And most important of all, now they started to choose between the apps. They didn't want it to lose 99 cents on a poorly made app. They wanted proof that the app delivers what it said it does. The freemium area was born. In this system, you could download the free version, play the first couple of levels, get the feel of it, and if you liked it, go to the premium version and buy it. Okay, the customer could try out first for free the app and decide if he liked it, and if he did, then he could buy the paid version. Good for the customer because he didn't have to buy a cat in the back, and good for the developer because fewer one-star ratings were made because the customer expectations weren't fulfilled. That kind of solved the problem with saturation and started a natural selection sort of thing. The good apps were tried and bought. The bad were left to die even if they were only 99 cents. This was good. But then the market kept on growing. It became a big problem. You could have made the greatest app of all time if people didn't know about it. At this point of time, the App Store became so big that it couldn't deliver visibility democratically. By the way, that never had been the scope of the App Store. Offering a marketplace was, but we all enjoyed visibility while we could. Now we had to pay for it. And advertising sites grew like mushrooms. You paid them a ton of cash, they advertised it all over the web, your app jumped on on the top 25, you cashed in the money and, and and you ended up the numbers you still didn't make that much. They were hard times. Not only that you couldn't make too much with this marketing your app to the top charts baloney, 
there were chances that it could all fail and you could lose a lot of money. It was a horrible time to be an indie developer. If you didn't have the cash, you didn't even have a chance. You were lucky with one or two downloads a day. And this trend seems to continue. But this is bad. It helps only the rich studios with the money. They can make a garbage game, throw a lot of cash into marketing and earn millions. Well, not that much if you cut all the expenses, but they are still okay. Now you must be shivering of fear asking yourself, Oh, why did I ever choose to enter this monopolistic market? Why? Fear not, my friend, because I have good news. The age of the Angry Birds is over. What I mean is that the market has changed. And this monopoly over us, not so rich developers, is crumbling down. And it is falling fast. The market has changed. Better said, two aspects of the market has changed. One, people started to wake up and realize that shitty apps still remain shitty apps. Whether or not they have a huge marketing campaign behind them or not. People started cherishing value. And two, spreading the word out there about your app has gone wild is social. Nobody cares, well, most of the people don't care what big advertising sites feature you as the next big hit. Because they know that most likely it will be the same old rubbish they shoved up their mouth one month ago. Trust people, not review sites. And that is what I'm talking about when I say the market is changing. People trust their friends and their friends' recommendations. The little guy has just cut a break. If you have a great app or game, people will spread the word for you and get you hardcore clients for you. Not just 1000 free downloads where the user opens, closes, then deletes your app. The key is to make your app social. Let people share everything in your app. Let them like a level, let them post a high score on Twitter and so on. This goes way out of the scope of this course, but I'll be making one on how to make your app social soon. Oh, and Game Center or OpenFaint or Gree is not good enough. People don't want to sign up to a third party. They want to do the sharing right within your app. No logins, no signups. They want to do it where they feel like home. And where is home, you ask me? Home is Facebook. And home is Twitter, period. Well, I've been wandering off again. I'll, I'll be making a course soon on this. Okay, new market, social customers. But how to monetize it? The free-to-play system is the way. First, let's take a look at some stats. Let's open iTunes now. Let's look at the top paid section. As you can see, Angry Birds space is here. And Angry Birds original is number 29. Now let's take a look at the top grossing. See something funny? Most of the top grossing games aren't paid ones. They are actually for free. But, but then how are they making money? You guessed it, with in-app purchases. It is called free to play. And it can get you a ton of money if you do it right. I will go deeper in the free to play system in the next lecture. By now I hope I have convinced you that the money is in free to play games one last note, if you don't see that the overwhelming of top-grossing apps are free with 
in-app purchases, then this course is outdated and you should take it as a piece of history. I want to help you with the most up-to-date information. I'm sure that I will update this course for you with relevant information so you can grow your business with the newest concepts and tools. Thank you for your attention and see you in the next lecture.